come and spend a couple of days with us, and we appreciate that. So if you will, uh, put your hands together and welcome to this sacred desk. Dr. Wanda Frazier Parker. Come on, give her a Texas welcome. Come on, y'all. I want you to give Jesus the greatest hand praise you can give him on this morning. Now keep on clapping those hands. Keep on blessing his name. Clap your hands because he's brought you. Clap your hands because he's God. Clap your hands because you just love him. Clap your hands because he's good. Now just clap just because you just want to clap. To the most honorable shepherd of this house, our spiritual father, we honor you today and salute you. Can we salute Bishop Richard Young on this morning? Thank you so very much. Okay, that was cute. Now let's celebrate the man of God. You just clap for your own self. And to the most vivacious, lovely bride that he's been married to for quite a while now. And um, she decided to keep him. Praise the Lord. And not throw him away. <laughs> Can we celebrate the first lady of this wonderful church the chosen vessel lady R. god i love you so much isn't she beautiful just a beautiful just the epitome of femininity and womanhood and the epitome of holiness and what a woman should be like i want to be just like her when i'm about to turn that wonderful age anybody that can look that good and dress that fine yes yes Bishop, you know, you have to be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep your eyes over there on that right there. Yes, Lord. She's a beautiful lady, and I've loved her. I was thinking about the number of years that we've been family. I say family. And it's been about 15 to 18 years. I know it's been 15 years um, since we've been family. I think there's a few more months added on to that. And so I'm not a stranger, but I'm just so glad to be a part of the Chosen Vessel family and you having me here for your special month. To God be all the glory. We're not going to do a lot of preliminaries to Dr. Myron Williams. Let's celebrate him on this morning and the Bishop's Choir. I need your spirit. I want your spirit. I need your spirit. Gotta have your. Okay. That's all right. I leave it to the singers. I just need to get that little bit out. <laughs> Paul, I need your spirit. I want your spirit. Everybody say I need your Yeah, there it is, there it is, there it is Fall down, fall down I want it, I need it, I gotta have it Yeah, I do, yeah, I do Yeah, oh, 
I want his spirit to fall fresh on me. Lord, we love you today. We bless your marvelous name. How excellent is your name, Lord? In all of the earth, not just earth alone, but in planets that we don't even know exist. The astronospheres that are there, the galaxies, everything God from the beginning started with you and everything became after you. Thank you for being that kind of God. <laughs> an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm a sick to Kosha. Thank you for being an incredible God. What kind of God can do this for me? Victory, grace, and mercy. He is so special. God, you're simply incredible. Thank you for being an incredible God. We bless your sweet name today. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord my strength and my redeemer for Christ's sake amen familiar chapter of scripture Philippians 3 we shall not detain you I understand Bishop is preaching about 20 minutes now and um, that's a wonderful thing y'all pray my strength in the Lord I, I can do it I'm going to see how far I can get <laughs> in 20 minutes. I probably need to start practicing a little bit more often to preach in 20 minutes. Praise the Lord. Philippians 3, just two verses for time's sake. To all of you that are visiting here, this is the greatest church in Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, it is. I don't know any better place that you would need to be or want to be. Because this is where God lives. Please take my word for it. Please take my word for it. If you don't have a church home, you need proper spiritual covering. This man and woman will love on you. I mean, they will love you like chocolate ice cream. They will love on you like peach cobbler apple pie a la mode catfish collard greens macaroni and cheese glory to god that's the kind of love you will get if you join this here church i'm not even a member and i know i'm a member by proxy thank you i'll fuss at y'all later i had to find by find out by facebook that my father was sick, but that's okay. He gonna set it straight. Somebody better call my number. Let me go across Facebook and find out. I praise him. Come back. <laughs> Philippians 3. <laughs> Philippians 3, verse 12 through 14. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead I press toward the goal King James says the mark of the prize of the higher calling or the upward call of God in Christ Jesus my Lord Will you, will you repeat this, these words with me? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things 
which are her head. Tell your neighbor, say, I think it's time that you put it all behind you. Oh, reach around and grab somebody else by the shoulder, by the arm, by the wrist, by the hand. Tell them, say, I think it's time that you put those things behind you. Put your hands on your own self and say, self, I think it's about that time now that we put it all behind us. If you believe that it's behind you, just throw your hands up and holler at your girl. Come on in here now. Y'all sit down, sit down. I think it's time. I think it's time. I think it's time. I, I think it's time to put that stuff behind you. I started a series and I love when Bishop invites me to come, first of all, because I just enjoy the company of the chosen vessel. Um, I, I love the company, the people here. And um, whenever I come in January, it's always my first assignment of the year. And I had started writing um, a series. I'm not a series preacher um, by call, but as I'm getting older, just pull one little nugget out the text when I'm home and say, we're gonna preach this for the next four weeks. <laughs> Y'all be here, praise the Lord. And this series that I've started writing um, is about a momentum shift that's taking place and has taken place in the realm of the spirit that the devil doesn't even know the moment God shifted your life. I just said something good. We cannot, we cannot See every year that God gives us heretofore just as another new year. And the fact that we are still here. Something cataclysmic in the realm of the spirit is taking place on everybody sitting in this sanctuary today. The devil does not know that God has already shifted and transitioned your life to a whole nother dimension that regardless to what the challenge was and what the challenge could be possible, the situation that could arise, you have already stepped into another dimension of momentum that will hasten you to purpose and to destiny. And even though there are some challenges today, right here in this room, somebody came here today and needed something different to happen. Somebody came here today needing change. Somebody came here today needing healing. Somebody came here today needing answers. Somebody is in this sanctuary today wondering if there really is a God that can turn things, as Bishop said, in my favor. I heard the song, he's turning it around for me, but I don't really sense anything happening because I'm too focused on what I'm going through that I can't even sense that God is really turning it around. In fact, I took it out of God's hands and started working on it myself because it felt like it was taking God too long to turn it around for me. And yet it has not turned even though you put your hands in it God is sending a word today to tell you just put it behind you and keep it moving there's not one person in this room on the 21st day please earmark that that is just not a uh, happenstance on the 21st day of January the number of 21 is in God's numbering system that's not just uh, haphazardly sitting in this room that is in need of something to change somebody came today because they have reached you have reached a, a point and you need something different to happen in fact you needed it to happen before the new year even came in you needed God to fix some things and get rid of some stuff and turn 
return some things even three days before Christmas. You needed God to answer your prayers that you had prayed three years ago and you still waiting on an answer. But if the truth be told, there are some of us that are sitting in the sanctuary today that is in need of change from last year, this time to this year, right now, and it still hasn't changed. Well, I got some good news. It could be possible that it may not ever change, but if you would just put it behind you somewhere and not give any credence to what was, who was, what happened, when it happened, how long it took you out, how long it laid you down, how long it messed up your emotions, how long you were without, how long you didn't think you were coming out of it, but the fact that you are here, got your right mind, put your clothes on piece by piece, combed your hair, tied your shoes, put your clothes on right, and everything is matching and looking good, you ought to give God praise and glory that he kept you this long. the beginning of the year we go through our rituals our fasting our prayer let me tell you something this is a sidebar i found out that fasting and prayer still works I don't care what tradition you get rid of. Testimony service had its day. They would test the line instead of testifying. Yeah. So testimony service has had its day. But fasting and prayer still works. I just need to know is there about 50 people in here that know that fasting and prayer still works. You've seen it work on your own behalf. You know the hand of God turned it in your favor because somebody was fasting. Even if you couldn't fast and pray for yourself God put somebody on you on your on their mind put you on their mind and they started fasting and consecrating and denying themselves so that they could see the miraculous work of God's power work in your life there are some folk that do want you to live there are some people that want you to live I say it again there are some people that want you to live and not die to declare the works of my God and even though there's a lot of hate oration uh, among the body of Christ there's some people that want you to live because their future is wrapped up in your anointing so okay uh, I'm getting to my text I'm on my way I'm on my way just touch three people and say she's on her way mm-hmm. so so we go through we go through our rituals of fasting and praying and consecrating and detoxing mm-hmm. fervent exercise plans and nutritional plans to get our bodies our minds everything aligned properly so that when we don't eat too much red meat we 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 are a little leaner mm-hmm. don't somebody say nothing we so 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 we don't eat too much beef and all of that stuff that makes us sluggish all of that sugar all of the carbs that 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 you think is giving you a high but it's really causing you to go right back down as soon as you eat it you go up and you come right back down and hit the bottom y'all know that it's the truth Mm -hmm. go and try a couple of Krispy Kreme donuts and see what happens and so it is that while we are going through our rituals of detoxing we have to be aware mm, that the enemy is still somewhere lurking around about our place because he won't give up just to give up he won't give up just to give out he don't want to let you go because your future is looking better than your past there is there are some people who really don't know how they're coming out of what they've been in and even though the season has not changed the last time I checked God works in all the seasons of our lives and while it has not changed you have to know that he has already transitioned you and shifted you to a place far above the situation what did you say about it Paul he's called me to sit in heavenly places and if I am seated in heavenly places that means that the devil is under my feet well David what you say about about it, I'll make your enemy your footstool. God won't.
want you to know today that in spite of what you may have gone through, going through, and will go through, that it's all behind you. Just for the first time, tell somebody a shift is taking place in your life. And so it is. That was a little weak. Maybe you need to move your seat. I'll give you about three seconds. Now reach over and tell somebody and say, a shift is taking place in your life. It's more than just a shift. The momentum of your life is changing. Oh, God, I hear you right here. Where things have been slow coming and slow to happen, God said, am I Shandio, that when you speak a thing as though it be not, I'll create it and make it happen. I just want you to testify down your road and tell somebody God's about to make it happen. You just got to open your mouth and speak it. God Almighty, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh God, the momentum is changing. Thank you, Jesus. The momentum of our money is changing. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. God's in charge of the White House. The last time I checked, the Bible that I read and study says to me that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. While 45 thinks he got the upper hand, he ain't ran into the right man yet. Everybody he done bumped up into, they ain't got enough money. They don't have enough resources. So he feels he's the honcho. He's the one in charge. He might have the office, but he ain't the one in charge. You ought to tell somebody, momentum is changing in my life. And so it is. Wanted to get to the text and get out of this church. You got about 15 minutes to work it out. Let me just give you some examples of momentum shifts. Say that with me. Momentum shifts. This is a new year. But it's not just a new year. Momentum shifts do not work in our chronological times. Momentum shifts work in Kairos time. Lord help me here. Here. Uh, so there is this thing called uh, the natural shift. Now the natural shift or the natural sh- momentum shift uh, is when the earth is constantly shifting. Foundations that our homes sit on, uh, they shift. When I had my uh, second home built in Baltimore and the builder told me uh, as a young lady, he says, uh, uh, Miss Wanda, I want you to know that um, uh, y- y- your house uh, being brand new built up from the ground um, it's going to take about five years before it really settles and stabilizes <laughs> and then he said it's going to take another five years uh, before it really gets situated the way it should be even though we have done the building we have met all of the building codes I'm going somewhere <laughs> we, we, we've met all of the inspections but you really won't really feel the house shifting from one day to the next but from one year to the next you're going to feel some things hear some things some crackling sounds it's just some stuff that we've put together in the housing business that causes shifts and changes but the house is on a sure foundation we made sure that your foundation (laughs) oh god help me in this church we made sure that the foundation that we build your house on that we used the best materials we used the best mortar to mix we got the top-notch bricks that you picked out they were a bit expensive but in the same time your house will stand the storm of even a hurricane tornado and the fallout shelter will be your survivor place to go well God took me back to that house and he showed me this that for some of us our foundation 
foundations, our spiritual foundations have been shaken, but we are stable because we put some stuff behind us. Lord, help me right here. I don't think they hear it. That the builder, Jesus Christ himself, that they rejected. He was the one and is the one and forever will be the one that our foundation will continue to be stabilized on. It's going to go through some cracklings. It's going to go through some unsettled times. It's going to go through some shaking and rattling. Oh, but the fact that I know that the foundation that I'm on is not moving nowhere. Touch three people and say, hey, hey, hey. I hope you're on the right foundation. Now that's the natural momentum shift. Uh, there's one that's called the momentum shift of psychology or the psychological momentum shift. When Hillary Rodden Clinton lost the election, I'm going somewhere, there was a major loss of momentum in the stride of her step. You could see the devastation on her face because now that she didn't know what was going to be next because what was next for her was the White House as the president. But now the devastation hits her at this critical loss. May I suggest to you my brothers and sisters that while we may not have to concede to a presidential election there are some things in life that we had to concede to and it became a very devastating God didn't change it the devil didn't do it you didn't have the power to fix it so you just had to concede and ask God to give you grace to go through the devastation maybe I'm just preaching to myself but if there's anybody in this sanctuary that has ever had a crisis that devastated you until your mind wasn't even focused psychologically some days you didn't know if it was Wednesday or if it was Sunday you were getting in the car to come to church and the church doors were closed because psychologically the devastation started twisting up your fault God told me to tell somebody tonight that in the midst of even the psychological plans and plots of the enemy and just life itself God says he's been orchestrating everything concerning you from this day and the day that you were born God has had his hand on your life I need to say it again God's hand is on your life I need to say it again until you get it God's hand is on your life stop blaming the devil stop blaming God and stop blaming yourself and just say this is just a part of life that I got to deal with until God does something different touch your name and say put it behind you put it behind you put it behind you huh? one year in and the entire nation has been shifted backwards huh? somebody said momentum huh? we've been one year with 45 huh? and the nation huh? the momentum huh? have shifted the nation huh? backwards huh? momentum in the wrong huh? direction huh? can cause utter destruction huh? hurry up wonder and preach huh? seems as though they're trying huh? to erase eight years of history that brought us to a good place of momentum a good place economically a good place in our health care educational system a good place in the non-for-profit profits a good place where there was no racism and discrimination as blatant as it is now it was always there stigmatism segregation sexism genderism churchism and all of the isms and schisms that would divide a people I came to tell this body of Zion don't you let nothing and nobody cause you to divide whether bishop is here or not don't you let nothing and nobody cause you to throw in the towel because 
you're too close uh, to God's uh, ultimate plan. Uh, I need about 50 people in here uh, that will agree with me this morning uh, and shout, I'm too close. Uh, mm-hmm. I need the other 50 people uh, to agree with me in here uh, and shout, we are in a good place. Uh, mm-hmm. I know it's the worst of times, uh, but it's also the best of times. Uh, I know it's a time that it looks hopeless, uh, but it's also a time of light, uh, even in the midst of darkness. Uh, I know that we don't have uh, nothing before us, uh, but then we have everything in front of us. Uh, I just need about seven people right here uh, just to pass it down the road uh, and tell somebody uh, I got everything right in front of me. Uh, and so I don't need to look behind me uh, because everything that's in front of me uh, looks better to me than what was behind me. Uh, everything that's in front of me uh, looks promising. Uh, looks like the plan of God. Uh, looks like purpose on my life. Uh, somebody shout everything, 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 everything. I said everything, 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 everything. I got everything at hand that whatsoever I need God, he will supply. I just want somebody to know as I try to get out of this church, but I feel something on my back just to tell somebody that whatever God said about you, you got to live until you see Shake three people by the hand like you're going to shake it off and say, oh, neighbor, whatever God said, I need you to know you're going to live. If you got to live with it, you're still going to live. If you got to live without it, you're still going to live because there's some things that's in our past that we don't think we can live without. But I that there are some things that God will give us the grace to walk through it. Touch your name and say, hey, hey, I think some grace is falling on you now. I see grace in the room where you will use those special words. Curse a few folk out. God said, mm, shut your mouth. I'm going to give you grace for it. Where you will go down and lay some one. Just tell somebody God will give me grace. Mm-hmm. Y'all sit down. Let me get out of here. And here it is that walks us up to the text. There is something that is called momentum. Momentum. Spiritual momentum. Spiritual momentum is when the psalmist declared this is the day when the Lord was talking to me about this message and when I heard God wonder you want to preach so bad I wish I could preach like Bishop and when I heard that's a Bishop move in my spirit God he's so cool when he preach that this is the day that the Lord has made But what did you do, Wanda? I kept hearing in my spirit the day. You can't just treat this day like an ordinary day. And I'm not talking about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But the day of our age, the age of our generation, it's a day that he made. But hold on. I'm so glad to ask why, 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 why did he tell us to rejoice and be glad in it? I'm so glad you asked. The reason why he told us to rejoice because he already know that something better is coming out of this day. God, I wish I could preach it. Where it makes sense. Somebody shout And when he made this 
day. He gathered all of us together and told us to come the campus way on January the 21st. And if you show up, I got good news for you. That everything he promised is about to come to pass. Somebody shout this. shifts it's the day that the lord has made and not only am i rejoicing in it it doesn't mean that i'm just dancing but it means that my soul has become happy may i prophetically decree and prophetically declare that this day the 21st day of january something major just happened in the realm of the spirit i heard dr marvin say lord have mercy dr myron spoke a word into bishop's life and i said okay he messing me up now because god told me to tell you that your best days are right in front of you that everything that the devil tried it did not work you see the devil is something he will come in in a subliminal way could god almighty and while the doctors and the specialists that specialize in what they do while realtors and bankers specialize in what they do there's only but one god that sees everything and knows everything about everything there is to know about
seconds. Well, take three seconds. Because you, you, yeah, yeah. Take three seconds. And three things for sure. What you wanted, what you went through last year that tried to kill you, but it didn't have permission to kill you. See, I told y'all I ain't pray, huh? Okay. That's number one. The devil couldn't kill you. That's number two. And you couldn't even kill yourself because God wouldn't let you do it. Just put your hands on yourself and say, now, now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. That's what the church used to do when the bishop was speaking tongues. The whole church was speaking tongues. I grew up in the old holiness church that everybody did what the preacher did. And God told me, sitting at my desk, He said, Wanda, there's a praise that's been waiting. me and I know you love to praise me but for this that I just brought you through there's a praise that's been waiting and that praise will be the praise that will usher you to the next dimension of your momentum shift touch your name and say hey hey I don't know what kind you have, but the praise that I have is a praise in waiting. I don't think y'all got it quite yet. It's the one that when you wanted to praise, you couldn't even praise him. You ain't had a strip to praise him. Huh? Shout that praise because I learned how to put. 
put it behind me. Yes. Well, 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 well. This is what I need you to do for about three seconds. I want you to get the praise that's been in waiting. And I want you to do whatever is necessary to tell the devil that he didn't win this time. That he didn't win this time. That he didn't win this time. Win this time. When I get to three, there should be a blaze in here. One, two. Sit down. 